Hello. Hey, Harry. How's it going? I'm great. How are you? Not bad at all. Looks like you're in the studio or something. I am. I am. I'm in... Uh, this is where I work all day long. Nice. In the Good. old studio, yeah. <laughs> so it's like that. Harry has here. Um, fame of Harry Scarum, of course, you know, uh, Canadian legend. Um, you got mood swings coming out like on a new type of technology, it seems. Old new level. Like, yes. Um, about that. Well, what we're doing is uh, I work with a company called Sing. And um, you can check this out on singmarket.com if you're interested. But what we did was uh, we released the 30-year anniversary of the Harem Scarum record, Mood Swings. And so this record's never been released on vinyl before. So that's one element of it. And then we went ahead and put together some brand new bonus tracks that we did in 2023, uh, included along with a CD that comes with it. It's remastered. Um, along with the vinyl, obviously. and um, But the interesting part about this is, is that we merged the physical and digital components together, and they're minted as a uh, digital collectible. And so what that means is that the ownership is actually minted on the blockchain. So when you buy this, it's a limited edition. And let's say you buy, you know, number 100 out of 1,000. So you get a signed copy. And when you buy it on Sing, you get proper verification that you're the owner of that deluxe edition. So that becomes interesting down the road because when you see – um, records that uh, become, I guess, over time, they become scarce because, you know, uh, companies stop making them or printing them, specifically bands that, you know, do box sets or limited editions where oh. it's not just everywhere all over the world. So um, Harem Scarum did a box set about five or six years ago, and we did 1,500 units, and they sold for about $75 per unit back then. So they're on sale now. We see them on eBay or on Discogs for five, six hundred dollars. And so this really brings the ownership component back into something that you buy. And if you were to resell it and claiming true ownership to something that might be signed or um, something that uh, the band says, we only did X amount of these. And so it's a way to verify exactly what you're what you're buying and then later on verifying exactly what you're selling so everybody can feel comfortable it's it's no different in any market if you're buying a, you know a gucci handbag and someone says oh no this is the real thing but really there's so many knockoffs there's so many people that are just out even printing cds and making vinyl that aren't even authentic pieces so there's quality control these really come from the artists and what sing has done is that um you know we've put together these packages and they're authorized by the artist and you know that when you're buying something uh from the sing market that it actually came from the artist and like i said they're signed and numbered and authenticated that way so like that it's like a new technology let's say that you're really authenticating this material and it's like and down the road you know it's it's always that number you know that's exactly right and and nobody's really done that with music you know um i know there's companies doing it with you know clothing items or handbags and stuff like that it, it's going to be interesting when when the whole world eventually goes digital and you don't physically feel like you own anything because everything that you're buying in in the digital world you know especially music uh for this subject um it's kind of weird right because we're we're joining Spotify, we're paying subscription fees, but you don't own any of that. You're just using it. That's it, right? So yeah. when we look at people that still want to buy CDs or the resurgence of vinyl and people are excited about holding that in their hand again and owning something physical, uh, the next logical step would be to say, hey, I've got something special. This is mine. I can verify it. And if you want to buy it from me, I can also transfer the ownership to you now. Um, so that that's really the, you know, the uh, the gist of the uh, of the situation and what we're trying to do. And uh, 
musicians love the idea because again it's a bit of a return to ownership for the musician as opposed to just putting your music up on spotify and youtube and basically giving it away and this is a way to you know uh, basically interact directly with your fans and um, hopefully sell them something of value that they really really want because typically you had to go through a record company or you had to go through a distributor and those those ways of, of buying things are still fine and everybody does them but um it's important i think to offer something with new technology and just smartly say hey here's another alternative to uh a way things can be made manufactured and then sold and harry uh sing market is kind of like a, a distributor in itself because i see there's like helix on there and in other groups and yeah i mean it's it's okay. more of a platform you know so not unlike apple music or spotify it's it's a place you go to get something you know so it, you could even we've even said before it's it's a digital record store even you know where you go to buy things but uh, in our case and what we're doing now that's new this year is that you will get the physical items delivered to your door after eight to 10 weeks of purchasing. So when you go on and you buy something, you get the immediate digital download. So if you bought the vinyl, if you bought the bonus tracks, you bought all this extra digital content, you get that right away when you hit buy now. But eight to 10 weeks later uh, on your doorstep comes the vinyl, comes the poster, comes the signed eight by 10, um, all the physical things that come with it. So it's a little bit different than just going to the store and buying the vinyl and you pull up the sleeve and there's nothing in it. You know, these, like I said, they're signed and they're personalized and they're put together specifically, you know, as a deluxe edition. Um, hopefully, you know, for fans that are, you know, interested in those things. So you guys are like the first to do this in a sense, because it's like nothing I've heard of, you know. I mean, me either. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out and say nobody's done this before, but nobody I know have done has done this before. So it, uh, it definitely uh, feels cutting edge to us. And I mean, we talk and are involved with people, um, you know, on the on the tech side and the music industry. And we're not aware of anybody else doing this. You know, there's people doing NFTs, minting audio as NFTs, but they're not doing it with the physical components together and minting those two things as the NFT. In our case, the NFT is both the physical and the digital together minted as one NFT. And that's an excellent authentication, you know, when you think of it. Like, yeah, um, well, that's right. Look, and look, people that understand it know what the point is of that. But even if you don't understand it, you go to Sing, you put down your credit card, you buy it with a regular Visa, MasterCard, Apple Pay, whatever, and you get your vinyl. So it's not like you need to understand technology, cryptocurrency, or anything like that for you to just get what you want. But I think smartly, um, we've put all the worlds together. And if you are interested in the technology, you get a digital wallet that's set up for you when you hit buy now. You can take your assets out, you can sell your assets, you can do whatever you want with them. Um, because they're all, there will come a time for all of us when we're no longer here anymore. And so many people have giant record collections, um, you know, CD collections, especially vinyl collections that are worth tens of thousands of dollars, some even more, you know, uh, because you talk to these vinyl collectors around the world, some of them are nuts, you know, like they're just, they, they're, they're crazy with, uh, you know, with, with all the stuff that they own, uh, what's going to happen to it? You know, like where, who's going to know what it's worth and, and, you know, what to do with it. Right. So it brings up a lot of different things that, uh, a lot of people are interested in solving that problem and, and discussing it and figuring out a way that how can I go on record that, you know, uh, if I go sell something or trade something later down the road, that I can prove that, that, this is mine and there's real value to this and not that somebody just you know on a computer did a, another digital version of it because if you can just copy something and, and spread it around the world um it really decreases the value obviously because there's no scarcity tied to that one digital file but when you can marry it together with the physical portion of it then i think that's something very very interesting yeah you're basically giving an extra thing, which is the actual physical item and the vinyl. 
you know. That's right. That's exactly right. And again, like, you know, I've heard other CEOs talk about this, like in in the clothing world, or like I said, the handbag world, where they're going to put like, you know, uh, a code like or a chip or something into a physical bag. And so, you know, you scan that bag and it says, yeah, somebody paid $2,500 for this handbag. It's a Prada bag or a Gucci bag or whatever it is. This is an authentic bag. This is the, you know, the special limited edition that they put out. They do it with Nike, you know, shoes. They do it with all kinds of brands where you see later on, two weeks after they've done this limited edition special run, they're on sale for eBay for three times the price, right? You know, and that's a little bit weird. And concert tickets are the same way. Somebody's buying those concert tickets five seconds after they go on sale. And typically it's a bot, you know, like it's a... It's a technical bot that goes in, buys those tickets, and that you'll hear a lot of people complaining about ticket prices and that, you know, if it goes on sale at 10 o'clock, at 10.01, all the tickets are gone. And then on the secondary market, everybody's competing to buy that ticket. Yeah. Well, those tickets are scarce items as well for that particular night in that particular seat. And then whenever there's scarcity and people competing for it, the price goes up. But what if the bands could just sell directly to the people that want to sit in that seat and be there that night? You know, it makes a lot of sense as opposed to three or four people getting in the middle and everybody jacking up the price because the consumer pays, but the artist doesn't benefit from it. And this is no different. You know, what we're suggesting is that if we take the time to make a a record, create content and get it out to the world, we might as well sell it directly to the people at the lowest price we can and make it affordable to them as opposed to selling it to another distributor, then another distributor, and then sometimes three. Because we've made vinyl in the past that showed up in the UK, we're from Canada, showed up in the UK for 50 pounds. Well, you know, we made that for $20 Canadian, which is about, you know, 13, 14 pounds. Yeah. So when we sell that for 13, 14 pounds, then it goes to a distributor, like I said, then another one, then another one. By the time it ends up in the store and the consumer buys it, they're paying 50 pounds for that, which is closer to 60, 70 dollars Canadian. So somewhere in the middle, all these people made this money. The consumer had to pay for it, but the artist didn't get any of that. You know, I might as well sell it directly to yeah. the fan, you know, and, and keep the middlemen out of the situation. Um, it's not realistic for 100% of the products because people still go to stores and buy things. There's still distribution costs. There's still mailing and shipping costs, and they've never been higher. You know, they're, it, it's ridiculous what it costs to mail a piece of vinyl across the world. I mean, it really is. It's ridiculous. But unfortunately, we're all in the same boat in the same yeah. situation. And there's no real way around that if we're manufacturing and shipping physical goods across the world. That's just, you know, the way it is in 2023 and, and probably won't get any better or cheaper as time goes on. So people that consume stuff are going to, you know, have to, you know, get used to that and pay for that and myself included i bought things for a hundred dollars but the shipping was a hundred and ten dollars you know what i mean Uh, the shipping companies are in business to make money and they'll make money um so no matter what you're what you're shipping their their duties and fees associated with going across borders and manufacturing goods so that's that's not something that we, we think we can solve because it's impossible. But what we can do is offer some quality, unique product and, and offer it directly to the fans. And that's what we're doing with the Sing Market site. It's too bad musicians can't benefit, you know, when you think of it, you know, everybody needs to make that little bit of money. You know, it's like gatekeeping in a sense. It's like mm-hmm. you're not letting the mass movement of defense discovery it's like only the people yeah. have money you know that's or, right yeah you know, discovering it and and, yeah. it. And, and look i mean that's why i mean i'm not against spotify i mean i'm only against it when we start talking about artist royalties but i'm not against it from a from a consumer or fan standpoint that they can listen find new music and enjoy it you know at a at a reasonable cost and you know the sky's the limit for, you know, whatever genre, whatever style of music that you're into, you can find and discover and enjoy a lot of interesting music. And I think that's really cool. And and it 
and it should be that way. But, you know, of course, it comes back to the creators of that product. Um, nobody can really do that for a sustained long period of time without making a living doing it. And so that's become very, very difficult over the last 15 to 20 years um, as somebody that makes records for a living. So um, unless you're one of the top, you know, 1% of artists in the world, if you're Taylor Swift or Drake or somebody that's, you know, number you know in, in the top 10 of the hot 100 on billboard you're doing fine but it's everybody else it's that that has a difficult time you know uh making money and surviving in the music industry so again they're they're all interesting problems to try and solve for people that aren't in the one percent of of artists making records well said harry it's like um incredible i mean it's, it's <laughs> sad in the same the same time but it's like it is what it is, I guess. I really enjoy the idea of Sing Market, and I think this is um, the way to go. I mean, well, thanks. And look, I mean, look, you know, this is this is so early for us. We literally started this idea um, at the beginning of this year, and my my record, you know, for the Harem Scarum record, Mood Swings, and Andy Curran. Um, we thought we would put those out as as pilot projects just to test it to figure it all out and see how the whole system works and it worked extremely well so you know you can look forward to uh hearing from us some more with other artists that we're that we're going to do this with and um i just love the idea you know I've, i like i said i've been in the music business my whole life and so i can speak directly to uh you know uh, from the position of the artist to kind of know what the challenges are, what what you need to do to keep going in this business, and also be very realistic on the other side because I've been involved uh, as a partner in independent labels. I've you know I've worked with other major labels, so it's not like I'm anti labels or anti any kind of you know establishment with regards to uh, you know distribution networks or anything like that but i'm sure that most people can sympathize for any artist that you know has to cancel tours on sell sold out shows because you know uh the cost of travel and hotels and gas and all that like somewhere down the road we have to get back to some sort of ownership component for artists that they can live in their own little ecosystem and make records and speak directly to their fan base if there's bands out there that can travel the world like you know even harem scarum we can play shows in almost any country in the world and at least get 300 people to 500 people and in asia a couple thousand people to show up at a show you know we should be able to speak directly to those fans and and interact with them even if we're trying to sell something or even if we just want to give them a t-shirt or we want to give them free digital content whatever we want to do we should be able to do that without having three or four other people in the way that they've made a living or a business out of just being in the middle and so you know that's my uh, that's my speech <laughs> well harry i think the speech is uh, very well uh said and uh just um Good luck with all this stuff, and uh, hope you have an excellent summer, and um, keep pr producing music. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm, I'm sure we'll be in touch if we uh, if we get to do this again. All right. Well, you have a good all one. Right. and uh, You too. Love your ideas, man. All right. Thank you. Okay. Right. Bye. Bye-bye.